And welcome back, Haskey here with another guide for Banjo-Kazooie. Today's guide is going to be on collecting all of the jiggies on Freezy Peak. This stage has quite a bit of fun stuff going on in it. Got a couple of mini games to play, a few races to be in, and we're also going to be turning into the walrus form. So be sure to bring in 15 Mumbo Tokens if you can, or at least get close to it. There are, of course, as with all stages in the game, Mumbo Tokens all over the place. First up here, we're going to be playing this little mini game where we have to save these little light bulbs from being eaten by these green creatures, who apparently find them delicious. I'll just have to take their word for it. But if you kind of watch me here, I'll kind of start doing this rotation where I'll, I'll hit the first one and then immediately hit, hit the second one and then the third one. And if you can get a rhythm going, you can actually save almost all of them, which of course is, which of course is fast. <laughs> so we don't have to play this game more than we have to. Or you could just do as I did when I was a little kid and just hit whichever one was closest to me. I mean, you do have plenty of time. That game goes on for a while. Like, we weren't even halfway through it. Anyway, though, we got it done. We're going to wrap around back here. Shoot this on switch with eggs. Obviously. That's going to set up another timer. We're going to run over here. There's going to be a fly pad. And we're going to go on up there to the top of that tree and fly through the star three times. coming on over here. You don't have to go through any specific direction. You don't need to like come all the way back around and go through it the same way. You can just go through it immediately, turn around, and that's that's all just fine. Um, holding R while doing this makes it a lot easier. You can make, you know, of course, much tighter turns by holding R. If you did not know that, I'm really glad to be the one to tell you that. That is super helpful. I pretty much just hold R no matter what while I'm flying. I don't really see a reason not to. Anyway, though, with that done, we'll climb up inside the tree. We're going to stop for a quick second and grab this present off to the side. And we'll continue to climb up, I guess, the trunk of this Christmas tree. And then on top of this little platform here is our first jiggy. I can sometimes do that jump, and I sometimes can't. I don't really know what it is about that, where you jump up from the trunk of the tree. Um, if you're having trouble with it, just jump over to one of the platforms that's kind of circling around the, the, entire, the, the inside of that tree and just jump the gap to the center. I seem to have been able to get it that time. Again, I don't really know what I do different. Anyway, moving on. Gonna hop over here on top of this gigantic pile of presents and grab our first Jinjo. Back into the air we go. I'm gonna dip down here and kill our first snowman. This is actually for a jiggy, which is kind of a sneaky jiggy, I think. There's not very many jiggies in this game where you have to kill just a bunch of enemies, you know? There are, there are jiggies where you have to fight bosses, but I actually, I'd have to stop and think about all the other levels, if there's another level where you just, you know, kill all of X enemy and a Jiggy appears. But I also hit all of the buttons on that snowman's belly there, even though he's not actually wearing some sort of jacket. I hope those were buttons anyway. And that, of course, spawned the uh, the jigsaw piece kind of in between his legs there. Uh, we'll be over there later on to grab that. Just don't forget it's there if you do something similar. I'm gonna, oh, and I'm uh, trying to speed up the video a little bit by using the Beak Bomb ability to get around, and I just about fell into the water. I dipped my toes in there, took some damage, and then just mashed the A button and was able to uh, stay airborne. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. There's a, a flight pad actually right See if you can see... Oh, no, I went the wrong way. I, I turned the wrong way, rather. There's uh, three buildings over there. One of them has a chimney, and on top of that chimney is a flight pad. So if you if you do accidentally land or get knocked out of the air or something like that, and you need another place to take off, just look for that building with the chimney. Anyway, we're going to fly all the way up here. I think this is the only way you can get on top of the snowman's hat. I'm sure there's some speedrunner way to get up here without it, but... Or maybe there isn't, who knows. 
You can climb all the way up to the snowman's face without uh, a flight pad, but I don't think there's a way to get up here. The brim of his hat is, I think, is as high as you can go or can't go. Anyway, jumping down through the hole in his hat there, hopping on his nose, there's another present, and then walking out on his his pipe here. Inside his pipe is uh, a jigsaw piece, which I think is a pretty odd thing to be smoking, but hey, I will not judge. Jumping over on top of his broom here, we got the blue Jinjo. I think I mentioned it in the uh, Jinjo guide. It kind of looks like a surface that you might want to, you, you'd think you'd slide off of it, but you don't. So you don't need to quickly switch over to Kazooie or anything like that. It's okay. Anyway, riding the sled down, we're just going to dive bomb Boggy here, who apparently ate something he shouldn't have. <laughs> and I thought this was kind of amusing. You see that the jiggy went like halfway down the mountain there. Um, I've noticed that when you when you get that jigsaw or when the jigsaw piece spawns, it kind of has a random arc. It can kind of go wherever. Sometimes it kind of like will go up the other hill. That that time it almost <laughs> went sliding down the, the mountain there. I thought that was funny. Anyway, crossing over here, we're going to finally grab that jiggy that we got from hitting the uh, snowman's buttons or whatever those things were. Coming over here, I'm going to jump over there and get a quick bit of life. I actually didn't know how much health I had, so I wanted to be careful. That green ginger there, I think, is kind of pretty well hidden. Unless you're really exploring everything, I don't really see much of a reason to, you know, go all the way back there to the, to the back of that building. So kind of a good spot to hide a uh, Jinjo, I think. And we're going to fly on over here to Mumbo's place. Again, we're going to be turning into the walrus form. So I got me my 15... Nice jump, by the way. Got me my 15 Mumbo tokens. And up here is the yellow Jinjo. That's prob that one's probably not going to fool anyone by now. There always seems to be something up there in the rafters of uh, Mumbo's place. And now we are one gorgeous walrus. We're going to hop back outside. And now, of course, since we are a walrus, we don't need to worry about the cold water anymore. So that's very nice. And running over here. It's also quite nice that we got those snowmen out of the way early. Because otherwise those guys would be bombing us with snowballs constantly on this stage. Which usually isn't a problem. You just kind of keep on moving. Kind of add a, a little zigzag in there every once in a while. And it's it's pretty rare that they actually hit you. And now that uh, Boggy's stomach has been emptied, we'll find him over here. And he'll uh, challenge us to a race. Now we're going to see a crossfade here. Yep. So unfortunately, I, I actually lose this race. I, I could have showed the whole thing, but there really wasn't a whole lot going on in it. See, I got, I kind of got pushed off to the side there, and I missed a gate. And I, I'm not even really sure I would have won that. It was, it was so close. I'm pretty sure I, I could have very well lost it, even if I got the gate. So anyway, I didn't want to show that whole thing just to show me lose. So yeah, I'm gonna hide it from you. We'll just pretend like that didn't happen, and we will go for attempt number two here. Now, there's a lot that I want to talk about on this race, and I don't really have enough time. I could slow this footage down or rewind it or replay it or something like that, but I'm not going to. But basically, as you watch me here, you'll see that I actually don't try very hard. You see, I'm kind of just sandbagging it. I'm just kind of letting Boggy stay in the front. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm pretty sure there's like, um, like a system in effect where when you get ahead of Boggy, he'll speed up and overtake you. It's kind of like there's a like a rubber band thing that goes on where like when you're way behind him he slows down and lets you pass and then you get when when you get way ahead of him he speeds way up and overtakes you again. So kind of accepting the fact that I can't really get that far ahead of him, I don't really try on this. So I just kind of let him stay in front. And it slows the race way down. You can actually hear the sound of his sled. You'll you'll hear it actually speed up when I finally do pass him. But kind of kind of kind of use your ears, kind of listen here, and you might actually hear what I'm trying to say here. But I'm still not worried about it. I'm gonna overtake him right here, I think. And I go zip. <laughs> and now listen, listen. You hear that? That's 
he's kind of speeding up. But since I kind of waited for the last second, it, it's almost like it takes some time for him to reach his full speed. So I kind of just use that. I kind of just overtake him at the last second before he can speed up all crazy. And uh, it's not too bad. Having said that, I did lose the first time. <laughs> so here's me talking about my, my master strategy of going slow on purpose, and I totally lost the first race. But so, I don't know, take from that what you will. It seems to work for me usually. Um, whatever I go as fast as I can, it's like a 50-50 chance of whether or not I win. Whereas when I go slow like that, it seems to do better. Anyway, enough about that, I guess. Um, just walked over to Waza. Waza? Waza? The other walrus there. He, um, when you're Banjo-Kazooie, he kind of turns his face inside his little, uh, his little cave there. And he doesn't let you have that, uh, jigsaw piece. But when you're the, the walrus, he... He seems to be more willing to share, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, we're back over here to Mumbo's place once again. We'll be turning back into Banjo-Kazooie. Unlike some of the other levels where I've done the Jiggy Guides on, I've actually ended the level as the animal form. Uh, this time you definitely have to turn back into Banjo and Kazooie. So we'll go ahead and do that. Hop back outside and... <laughs> Recall that we can no longer touch the cold water, so we'll be go ahead and go ahead and slip into these boots, which have like the shortest timer in the game, by the way. And we're actually gonna head right back over to uh, the starting line of that race that we just did, and we're gonna do it again this time as Banjo Kazooie. See, that goes without saying, probably, but yeah, you have to beat Boggy as the Walrus before you gain access to this second phase of the race. This is pretty much the same thing, except we're going to be doing it with the turbo trainers, and the race goes quite a bit faster. But even then, I still think that that uh, sort of rubber bandy AI, whatever you want to call that, system is still going on here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stay behind him. I'm not worried about him being in front of me. Interestingly enough, there are a couple of spots in the second race, and only in the second race, where he'll just randomly speed up, and it seems to be whenever he goes over the buildings. Have a listen here. You'll hear it. <laughs> just all of a sudden, he's just going full speed. So I'll, of course, kind of maintain my distance behind him, so he kind of got away from me there, so I'm, I'm actually trying there for just a quick second. But now we're caught back up, and we'll continue to be going slow. And once again, I'll be kind of overtaking him right here. That's kind of my my cue to go for it. And as you can see, I get a pretty good lead on him just all of a sudden out of nowhere. Whereas honestly, I, I feel like, again, if I was trying my my best, trying my hardest that whole race, um, he very well could, could have just been in front of me. It's kind of an odd thing. But I guess it makes sense. I feel like, well, I don't know, maybe there's some younger gamers out there who haven't. Uh, experienced it, but I feel like a lot of old racing games, like way back in the day, had opponents like that, where you'd get like half a lap ahead, and you'd be like, there's no way he's going to catch me, and all of a sudden the opponent's going like three times faster than any opponent should. <laughs> and then he just goes zipping by, and you can't catch him again. Anyway, though, enough about old racing games. Back to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, we're back inside Waz's cave, who is not guarding the door anymore. Uh, now that we've... Uh, Got the Jiggy from him as the walrus. Come inside and grab that orange Jinjo, which in our case was our fifth one. Getting us that Jinjo Jiggy. And we are already at 9 of 10 Jigsaw pieces. I guess it's been 14 minutes. I guess that's kind of close to the longest uh, Jiggy guide that we've had so far. But man, that happened fast. Non-stop action on Freeze Easy Peak. And we're actually... be. I'm going to be heading straight back for the entrance of the level, but before we leave this igloo over here, we actually walked right past this when we started the video. It's full of very sad children. It's terrible. But we're going to fix it by giving them presents. Living presents. I shudder to think about those children tearing into those living presents. Luckily, we don't see it happen. That would be M-rated. Anyway, that's going to do it. That was 10 of 10 Jiggies already on Freezy's Peak. Boggy's completely conked out over there. Apparently there's a picture of us 
which is a little bit odd because I don't think we've met these characters before by the time we first enter Freeze Easy Peak, but I'll try not to think too deeply on that. And anyway, that's going to do it for our Jiggy Guide on Freeze Easy Peak. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you learned something. Coming up next is going to be the Jiggy Guide for Mad Monster Mansion. Stay tuned for it, and I will see you in the next one.